What we have experienced in the last three years running Simple Germany is that salaries in Germany is a hot and opinionated topic. The answer to what is a good salary in Germany highly depends on your perspective. In this conversation, we have Ivan, co-founder of Simple Germany, who is German, born and raised, and you have me, also co-founder of Simple Germany. I was born and raised in Guatemala City, Guatemala, moved to Budapest, Hungary, and then moved to Dusseldorf, Germany. We hope this conversation gives you insights to understand the role of money in Germany, what a good salary is, and at the end of it, to hopefully find out for yourself whether the salary you're looking at is good for you or not. So what do you think it's a good salary in Germany? There is no straightforward answer, and I can only give you my perspective from my research and my experience. There's two possible ways to look at it. There's the number perspective, when we actually just look at the actual number. And we have discussed this one before, where a survey says that 60,000 seems to be kind of like the rule of where happiness increases in Germany, 60,000 grows a year. Versus, we know there's also the study from the US, where 75,000 is kind of like the benchmark. Until then, happiness increases with my money. But from there, the increase is rather marginal because money does not buy happiness. <laughs> because that seems to be the, the line, the marginal number of income where your basic needs are met. That is one perspective. The other perspective is, of course, what you feel your time is worth and what you need to cover your lifestyle that you'd like to live, how many people need to live from it, where you're coming from, where you stand in your career. So it's a highly individual question. Yes, and I would say the third perspective, kind of like entangled with your second perspective that you mentioned, is where do you stand in life? For example, right now I'm 36 years old. Yes, I said that out loud on the internet. I have plenty of years of experience. I used to be a software developer. And if I would get a salary offer now of 30,000 euros, for me, that is a bad salary. It's not a good salary in Germany. However, when I moved to Germany 11 years ago, 30,000 gross a year was heaven for me. You have to understand, like you said, where you come from. I'm originally from Guatemala. There, my salary, I don't remember because I worked internship jobs, very low paying jobs. However, I moved to Hungary the first time. And there, I think I looked at my pay slips from back in the day. I think I was earning 20,000 euros. Well, not euros, comparable to euros because they have foreigns. So 30,000 euros seemed like a lot to me. And also I remember I have, I found also like a notebook where I would write down my costs and how much I could save because I wanted to save up for a brand new bed, an iPad, a laptop. And in these numbers, I found that I was saving 600 euros a month. That is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And with these 30,000, I remember, for example, I would take a 20 euro bill that I would go to the city center of Dusseldorf, to the Altstadt, to the Irish pub. And with that, I was able to have a couple of beers and a mini pizza at the end of the evening. I was able to save the 600 euros. I was able to do things, travel inexpensively. My grocery shopping was also pasta, tuna, and very little things. However, it was amazing at that time. And I remember you also in your first salary earned roughly, how much was it? Yeah, when I started actually working in Germany, which was only at the age of 25, because before I kind of like escaped because I never wanted to be in Germany. And uh, there I started at 30,000 gross as well, even though I had already four years of experience. And just like you, I was able to, I had my own flat, I was able to travel, I went out, I lived I didn't live a saving lifestyle. I lived the lifestyle that I wanted to live at 25. However, it was also very clear to me that that would not be the salary that I want to continue my life on. It was the entry to the job market in Germany. And already within one year, I got a salary increase. The next year again, then I changed jobs to have another salary increase. That's usually how it goes, right? However, from my get-go, whenever I decided to study tourism, I knew I would not be among the best earners in Germany in an employed situation. My sister, on the other hand, she chose to be an engineer. And it was for me always crystal clear she would be earning way more than me, sometimes even double than me, even though we worked the same hours, even though we had similar responsibility levels. And that is just based on the industry itself. So that is a huge impact, not only the country really that you choose to live in. Yes, so we could say then the risk you're willing to take for example, at that point, I didn't mention I was living in a shared apartment when I was earning this much. 
And the risk I was going to take, I was single, young, it wasn't such a dramatic thing. If I would have had a family, been married, and I'm the sole uh, income provider, that's a different story. We put the 30,000 euros that we were earning back in 11, 10 years ago into this inflation calculator to kind of have an estimation of how much that would be now in 2023. And we found that's around 37,600 euros, which still, for me, I agree, it's a very low salary right now if someone would offer me, offer me that salary. Yeah, right? but right now we are also aged, right? We are like a decade older. And I would say it's human nature that the more experience you gain, the more you progress in your career, that you would like your salary to grow, not just with that, but exponentially more. So to answer the question, what is a good salary? You really need to look at where you stand in life, where you're coming from in terms of money, but also lifestyle and living situation, how many dependents you have, what your experience level is and what you want from life. I think the last one is very important. Is the highest salary and the maximum earning potential the main driver of your life? Or is it maybe a better work-life balance, more quality of life? In your case, it was less violence, being able to be true to yourself as a queer woman. What other reasons did you have? Or was money, in, was money a deciding factor for you? I would say money was not the deciding factor. However, as I mentioned before, for example, in Guatemala, I was earning quetzales. That's the, that's the currency. And with quetzales, if you want to spend in dollars, it's very little money. And I learned that also when I was in Hungary, I had foreigns. And whenever I traveled outside of Hungary to the rest of the EU, it was euros. And I was like, okay, this is very little money again. So euros was a very attractive thing. However, I didn't come to Germany specifically just to make the million bucks. And this is a place that I'm going to be a gazillionaire. I came here mainly for looking, better for looking for a better quality of life. Like you mentioned, to be able to be who I am. I'm a queer woman and to be able to not hide that and live freely, to have less violence. And the third one, I would say, it's the potential of earning a good salary, which again, what is a good salary? Do you think you could have, uh, did you think back in the day that you could have better potential of earning more in the US? Yes, because Guatemala is super close to the US. So we, 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 have, we hear a lot from the US and there you hear crazy numbers that people earn, I don't know, like $200,000 a year, which here in Germany seems almost an impossible or very, someone that is maybe the general manager of, I don't know, BMW could possibly earn that, but it's a very <laughs> high, high salary. You know what I mean? Versus in the US, all these numbers get thrown in. I haven't lived in the US as an adult, so I don't know, for example, how accurate that is, right? If it's just in California, if it's just in certain parts. However, I always knew that the US has more potential of earning hard cash. However, you also have to consider the other side of it. You have hard cash, but what can you do with it? In Germany, one of the things that I love is the fact that public uh, health insurance is included, included. It's taken away from your salary automatically. But you have access to it. You have access to it. You pay half, the employer pays half. And the moment you go to the hospital, you're not anxiously waiting afterwards for the bill. Yeah. So that is an amazing peace of mind for me. I mean, we have enough stories of, of friends or friends of friends who, let's take the US as an example, just because that's the driver of our Western society. Let's put it that way, right? Yeah. In terms of what we hear, and what we aspire to sometimes. <laughs> um, and they need to take a second mortgage on the house because suddenly they have hospital bills from 20, 30, 40 or more thousand dollars. That is not the case in Germany. So it's peace of mind in a way that you're getting. And the trade-off is not the highest salary that is out there in the market if we consider the world. Yes, and also an interesting point. I think we read a, or we saw a documentary about the debt levels in the world. And the people from the U.S. have very high debt levels, right? Alone with student loans, mm -hmm. with um, it's a very high consumerism country. So almost everyone has a big debt. Versus, I would say in Germany, I would conservatively say that debt is existent, yeah. however, not to the extreme levels as in the U.S. I would agree to that. Yeah. But let's stop comparing to the U.S. Yes. Let's go, <laughs> let's go back into the reason also one of the motivation factors for this conversation is the intention and the decision to move to Germany. And I think that is super important to understand what you are aiming to get out of it. And they're always the people that say, oh, there's too high taxes, salaries are too low. And one can argue about both of those factors. That's perfectly clear. But I think for me, it's always important. What is your perspective? And what is, what is it that you're trading into 
to leave your home and your family and your friends. And everyone has different motivations. And I think what is important for us to voice is, if money is the driving factor, purely Germany is not the right country, most likely, because that is not the driving factor of the culture in Germany. However, if there's other intentions, like we mentioned before, that are more quality of life topics, then it could be an option for you. But also everyone has to test for themselves, right? And I think you, I believe, I live by the, I, can, I live by the value that you can only judge or tell if something is right or wrong for you if you've given it a chance. And there's nothing wrong, actually, it's the biggest strength in life to try something, to do something, and then a few years down, month down, you know, depending on how you assess, you have the guts to say, this is not for me. Then you know it's not for you. If you've never done it, you will always have the doubt, is it for me? Yes, completely true. And another thing to mention is 11 years ago, when I started with 30,000 euros, I knew that was not going to be my salary forever. There was room to grow. So what is the goal of your life is also very important. And I hit a point in my career as I was a customer service representative where I couldn't grow anymore. I couldn't grow within the company and I was stuck at this level. I think after a certain amount of raises, I reached 35, 36,000 a year. And I wanted more because I wanted more income to travel more, to do more things. And there I had to look at the market. No one was looking for a customer service representative. However, a lot of people were looking for software developers. So I learned to code on my free time weekends. I have a whole, we have a whole video talking about my journey, which you can check out here. And the first job that I got as a developer was an intern where I was earning, I think it was like 20,000 or 25,000 a year. I think it was like one five gross or something like that. Yeah, something a month. very yeah. little. Even, it was even less than what I was earning. Oh yeah, as a customer it was uh, several steps back. Yes, however, I knew it was three steps back to in a few years time to do five steps forward. And that's exactly what happened. I ended my software developer career rejecting an offer for $85,000 euros, sorry, <laughs> euros working remotely. I mean, going from 30,000 to 85,000, maybe in the US there's other success stories that is like triple, but for me that was incredible. And again, is what is your goal? How hard are you willing to work for it? And definitely how many years of experience you have in the field and in what industry you are play a massive role into how much money you can earn in Germany. Now, we have many Latino or German Latino friends here in Germany. And if we look at their life with children, what is your takeaway that I think is very important to point out that Germany does not offer compared to what you know from most of the Latino culture, how their lifestyle is um, in their countries? Yeah, so again, here's the answer. Money is not everything and lifestyle is very different. And in Guatemala City, like in a lot of Latin American countries, and I would also say maybe other parts of the world, services are relatively cheap. What I mean for services... Human services. Human services. Yes, exactly. For example, someone to clean your windows, the gardener, all these things are very inexpensive. And it's very common, especially for families, to have at least one service person living even within your house and this person cleans cooks and if you're a little bit more financially better right then that person you have a second one that takes care of the children it's like an au pair but that person never it's leaves. a full-time nanny yes it's a full-time yeah. nanny who usually grows up with the children like i for example when i was a kid my mom had these two people someone to help clean the house and a nanny that i remember her name and she was very important in my life and that was before your dad passed away that was before my dad passed when away. when you were financially better standing yes yeah However, that's a story, very good, that's a story for a different time. However, for example, just to give you how, an example of how inexpensive these things are, I have a friend who, I would say she earns in the lower half of salaries in Guatemala City, and she can also afford to have a full-time cleaning staff, or not staff, but one person that helps to clean, cook, and take care of the baby. Versus in Germany, these things are highly expensive, I would say it's absolutely not normal to have someone to cook for you unless you're literally in the millionaire scheme. The maximum and which is more normal to have is a cleaning, cleaning help. However, not a full-time staff, but more someone that comes once or twice a week for three to five hours, depending on how big your home is, and cleans for you. Maybe does the laundry if that's what you would like to add. But that's about it. There's no more human service that is common to have in a German home. Yes, and that can be a massive culture shock, especially because you need to adapt your lifestyle to it, right? 
We have uh, friends who they're both from Guatemala. They live in the south of Germany and they have two beautiful children. And for example, the mom is the one that is taking care of the house, of course, right? I don't mean of course in the sense that the mother should take care of the house, but I mean because in Germany, this kind of services are not so accessible. So her, their lifestyle as a family is that both dad and mom need to take care of everything from cleaning the house, doing the laundry, cooking, grocery shopping, all these things need to be cared within you. So that is time that needs to be... Which, listening to this is me like, but what else? <laughs> I mean, huh? Like, where are you coming from? This is, mm. this is life. I mean, yeah. Having kids means you need to raise them yourself. Yes. Of course you go grocery shopping yourself. For me, this the first time we had this discussion, I was like, I really couldn't understand what you mean until we also talked to a Peruvian couple where both parents used to work in Peru. And currently it's only one person working. And the other person is realizing what life in a different society could mean because that person needed to learn to cook to clean, to take care of the kids, to really run errands, which was completely out of scope and, and never experienced that before in the life in Peru, just because financially there they afforded to have people doing that for them, which for Germany or Western lifestyle sounds like the utmost luxury. <laughs> so that is just a very big culture difference that needs to be taken into account when we talk about life, lifestyle, and cost of living in Germany. Yes, and that even though they have a very good salary, the salary could never be as good, as an example, to have the ability to hire this kind of help at home. Yeah, just right? because that help is also just not available. Yes, it yeah. doesn't even exist. Yeah. And going back to the conversation with when my Guatemalan friend wanted to move to Germany, we had a call where she asked me a lot of questions of house life and everything. And one of the questions was, was how much budget do I need to have someone help me around? And I was like, well, the most you can count on is a cleaning uh, person that can go and, and assist you for a couple of hours, but that's it. And this, she took that information. I was like, okay, good, noted. I'm taking the challenge, you know, I'm, I'm, it's fine. I don't need that. And that was her perspective. To kind of narrow this conversation down and what we have heard in three years of Simple Germany as the main reasons for people to be motivated to take the plunge, do the move. For some, it's the first time that they're changing countries. For others, they're already nomads and it's, it's you know, not the first foreign experience they have. But I would say the six main arguments it comes down to or reasons, motivations behind a move to any other foreign country, in this particular case, Germany, are to experience a different culture where there's really no other reason than for the adventure, for a better quality of life, for more peace of mind that comes with that, for a better work-life balance, lifestyle per se, for innovation as well, depending on what field of work you are in. Engineering is, Germany is still a big engineering country. We have very big, good universities also for research. Lately, we've learned there's a lot of people also working in academia coming to Germany. And also, a lot of people are coming to Germany to offer a better life or a better future for their children, often including good and free education, which in other countries that is maybe not as accessible. So there's various different reasons or motivations for a move. You need to ask yourself, what is yours? And how does that contrast, again, a potentially higher earning example in your home country, elsewhere in the world, and that needs to be kind of like your... Weighed out. Yeah, your, you need to weigh those factors against each other. And a massive thing which we started with this video was that perspective matters. I read a YouTube comment from a person that watched a video saying, salaries in Germany are crap. There's, I know people, I think they're doing PhD or some sort of academia who they're cycling to work every day because not because of their environmentally friendly, but because they can't afford anything else. In my perspective, I'm like, wow, they have the freedom to cycle to work every day, you know? And yeah, maybe they're not earning the big bucks, but maybe they're happy, you know? Cause yeah, like I said, money, it depends on your perspective, whether it's the defining factor, if it makes you happy or not. I was the happiest getting on my U-Bahn and I had a very old bike, which different story. With my 30,000, now 37,000 euro salary when I moved here, that for me was life changing. For others, this might not be the case. So it highly depends on perspective and we have shared hours. And at the end of the day, you need to, you need to decide for yourself where you stand, what you're looking for and analyze, is Germany the right country for me? 
Right. To help you with that analysis, we have linked our playlist on salaries, cost of living in the description below, where we really give you hard facts of doing numbers, crunching numbers to understand, to feel better what euros also get you. This is the very first time we do such a video. And if you watch until the end, that means that it was interesting. And if you're here and you like this and you would like to have more of these conversations from Ivan and I, then please let us know in the comments below. Until next time. Cheers.